Hello, my name is Christian, and today I'm going to be working on a linear programming problem solved by the simplex method. So as a little side note before starting, I noticed that when the student originally uploaded this question, there was a tiny little problem with the uh, formatting of um, expressions regarding currency, because there's money involved in this problem. So wherever you see an sh dot some quantity slash equal, I thought it was some kind of a formatting error, so I'm just going to call that, you know, when that shows up, something like dollars, $45, $80 in lieu. Now, on with the problem. A furniture manufacturing company plans to make two products, chairs and tables, from its available resources, which consists of 400 board feet of mahogany timber, 450 man hours of labor. Making a chair requires five board feet, 10 man hours, get a profit of $45. Each table uses 20 board feet, 15 man hours, $80 profit. As production manager, you're required to determine how many chairs and tables the company can make, keeping within the available resource constraints, so that it maximizes the profit. And we're also going to have a convention for representing all these quantities. X sub 1 is going to refer to the number of chairs produced. X sub 2 is going to refer to the number of tables produced. Okay, so that's the introduction to the problem. Let's jump in. Okay, X sub 1 is going to represent the quantity of chairs produced, X sub 2, the number of tables produced. It helps to put everything into a chart like this. So these pieces of furniture require uh, timber, they require labor. These are the two inputs that we're working with. Of course, there's more in real life, but we're just working with two for just this problem. Chairs require Again, five board feet of, lay of um, timber and 10 man hours of labor. Tables require 20 board feet of timber and 15 man hours. We must keep within and up to what we have to work with. Resources are scarce. So we have 400 board feet to spare amongst all the furniture we produce. And likewise for 450 man hours of labor. And again, profit. Profit is $45 for a chair and $80 for a table. This part becomes the basis for the objective function, as we call it. That is what we want to try to maximize. In other kinds of problems, it's a minimizing thing. Most often it's a maximizing thing. We want to maximize profit. So 45 from a chair. 80 from a table. Altogether, how much you sell, that will get you your profit. Now, when you put everything into a system, so I have two systems, very similar. One's wrong because, well, although it's, in a way it's true, it's also not, because we haven't honed in, like closed in, I would say, on only real positive quantities for labor, for the timber. So that's what um, this helps with. All the inputs and also the number of chairs and tables we produce, they have to be positive quantities. If you are graphing this problem, if you're doing linear programming by a graphing approach, you have to keep in quadrant one because all these quantities have to be positive. So again, that's for timber, labor number of chairs, number of tables, everything needs to be positive. And we maximize this profit. All right, so I just uh, rewrote the system here for convenience. Now we have to turn these inequalities into equations. So what we do in order to do that, because we don't know how far below we are 400 or how far below we are 450 or what have you. So what we do is we introduce the addition of a slack term, and those will just be variables. And they help to facilitate um, uh, the matrix mechanics along the way to help us find the problem, the solution to the problem. So 5x sub 1 plus 20x sub 2, we have to add in a slack term. Here it is. We add in a slack term that we'll call u, and that changes the inequality into an equation. We're going to equal 400. That part hasn't changed. Second inequality. 
less than or equal to 450, that now becomes adding in slack u equal to 450. We don't worry so much about the x sub 1, x sub 2 becoming positive. It helps for our thinking, but not exactly necessary when actually running through the method that I'll be discussing here. The profit equation, we're going to call profit m. So m equal 45 x sub 1 plus 80 x sub 2. What we'll do is we'll subtract m from both sides. So that would be keep the slack. m will be that slack for this particular equation. We're going to keep it on the left-hand side of the system, just like we've been doing for everything else here. And what we'll do, we'll divide both sides by negative 1. That way we keep with everything um, I've been introducing there with the slack being added. It gives us the consistency of adding m. Otherwise, it would just be subtracting m, purely algebraic notes. OK, so now we've got the system. Now we turn it into what's our first matrix, really, what we call the initial simplex tableau. Again, there are three slack variables, u, v, m, and also, again, uh, x of 1 tables, x of 2 chairs. X of one, X of one is pairs. X of two. Okay. So we take on more columns and kind of inflating this tableau with ones and zeros because of the slack. So from U alone for that first inequality turned into equation, we just have U as slack. So V and M, they get zeros. And we augment that against 400, which is that constraint. Nothing's changed there. The second inequality turned into equation. There's a V slack. So we just introduced the V slack. The U and M are just zeros. We augment against 450. Again, that was the constraint there for labor. Uh, the bottom, which goes to the profit equation, negative 45, negative 80. The only slack there is uh, from M. We keep U and V as zeros. So we augment that again, zero, because that's how we express the profit equation. Now we have our initial simplex tableau. Now we have to start doing um, all kinds of row operations on this. It should feel like Gaussian elimination. And in some ways it is, but also isn't. It's not a true Gaussian elimination. So establishing a pivot column. So look at the bottom element of each column. So these numbers down here. Which one is the quote-unquote most negative? Remember, although a negative number could look bigger, if you think about like absolute value, if you will, it's actually smaller. So the closer you are to zero, the bigger you know the number actually is. You know, but if you're further towards like negative infinity, that's actually smaller. That's what I'm calling most negative. In this case, it's negative 80. It's the smallest number technically, but if you want to think of it as most negative, you know, feel free. So the pivot column is going to be this second column. Now we need to find an element to pivot about. So for that, what we do, we take ratios. We take ratios between the rightmost column. So in this case, let's say I'm working on the, oh, these boxes here. Okay, 400. Let's do 400. We take a ratio of that to its corresponding element in the second column, what we just established should be the pivot column. 400 divided by 20 is 20. So let's just keep that in mind for now. 450 divided by 15 is 30. And we only do this for the positive entry, so don't even worry about going into the bottom uh, row there. And also, I haven't noted it yet, but because we have two negative um, entries in the bottom, in the bottom row there, uh, that's why we have to go with them um, all the time below and such. If there are no more negatives down there after all the operations, then you're good to interpret your final tableau. Okay, so we just had our ratios calculated, 20, 30. You pick the smallest one. The smallest one is 20. So that means we are going to pick the 20, so this, as our pivot element. Now we can start the row operations. Okay, so I'm just going to list out what the uh, row operations here 
I expect that you can do this in a calculator or by hand to verify the work. What we're going to do, of course, we're going to um, pivot about 20 here. We're going to divide everything in that first row by 20. That is to multiply every element in that row by 120th and to store those results, those changes, into that same row. So divide everything by 20, we get to this um, second tableau here. And then, so let me just mark off where we are. We've just done that. We've divided everything first row by 20. Okay, great. So now we want to get that 15 and that negative 80 to become zeros. Again, it feels like Gauss-Jordan elimination, but it's not the truest form of Gauss-Jordan out there. So we want to multiply first row by negative 15 to help to cancel out this positive 15. So multiply everything in the top row by uh, negative 15 and then add those products to row two, store the results in row two, which now end up here. Lo and behold, we now have a zero there. A similar logic follows into the next time below. We multiply everything in row one by positive 80 to help to cancel this negative 80 to make it turn into a zero. So multiply everything in uh, row one by 80. Add those products to row three, store the result in row three. Now we have a happy little column of one and zero and zero. Uh, here's the thing though, now that we finished pivoting about that column, we still have a negative 25 in the bottom row. So that means we're gonna have to do this procedure again. Very similarly, we're going to be doing our ratios and we have to stick with this one as our pivot column because that's the only column with the negative entry in the bottom. So 20 divided by a fourth is 80. 150 divided by 25 fourths is 24. 24 is the smallest ratio of those two, 80 versus 24. So we're going to pivot about this 25 fourths. Okay, so very similarly, uh, we want to get that pivot element to become a 1, so we'll multiply everything in that row by its reciprocal. 4 25th, store the result in that same row. So now we force the uh, 1 there, which is what we want. Now we have to make everything above and below to be zeros. So we want the top row to have a 0 in place of the 1 fourth there. So multiply the second row by negative 1 fourth. Add those products to the first row, store the results in the first row. We now end up down here at this tableau. Now there is a zero there. Huzzah. Okay, now I need to do something similar for this negative 25 down here. So what we do is, because it's a negative 25, you want to use a positive 25 in order to help cancel it out to make it become zero. So multiply everything in that second row where we're pivoting about by positive 25. So 25 times the elements of row 2, adding those products to row 3, storing the results in row 3. And then we end up here, and now we have a happy little column of 0, 1, where the pivot was, and 0. And look, all the entries in the bottom are now positive. We do not need to do any more uh, pivoting and such. We're done. So now what we need to do is read off the results. So, um, I learned uh, some terms called group one and group two. I learned the simplex method in a finite mathematics course at a community college. So the terminology might be a little bit different from a linear algebra course, not too sure. But um, these quote unquote messy variables that we came up with are called group one and the otherwise so-called cleaner ones are group two variables. We do our interpretation and we get our final result from the group two. So look here, here's the X1 column and I, I read introduce the labels here. Group two variables are going with x1 and x2, the number of chairs and tables. We also have it on m for the profit. So let's read x1, the number of chairs. We have um, one here. It's corresponding to a 24. So we read that off as 24 chairs produced, um, except two, the number of tables. We go off of what's on the right. 14, 14 tables produced. And looking at M for profit here, 
we are going to read off 2,200 as uh, the value of m. That's going to be the profit. So here's how we interpret the final result here. Rectangle. Okay, in order to maximize profit, which happens at $2,200 of profit, the company should produce 24 chairs and 14 tables. And if you wanted to uh, check that in, say, Desmos or some other graphing utility, be my guest. Okay, so that is this problem, the simplex method problem. I hope you I figured something out. If you have any questions, please let me know. I'm glad to look at it again. I thank you and have a good day. I hope this helped. Yeah.